Hi, this is Larry. I just want to talk to you today about database concepts. Uh, the issues are basically understanding what a database is and how it really is related to files and file structures and how it's all combined to make for better processing of data. So what I want to talk to you about today is data versus information, the concept, um, look at file systems, then look at database models, database management systems, and database design. So data, when you hear the word data, most people think of it as information. So what is it? Some say data, some say data. But really what data refers to is facts and figures. Information is data that is presented in a usable manner uh, to a user, user, meaning that you can have names, address, and phone numbers someplace, but it doesn't mean anything until a user actually can see it and understand it in a way that makes sense to them. So let's talk a little bit about file systems. Files are the basic unit of storage that we have on computers. And everything you have to understand physically in a file system is storage. is nothing more than a string of bits or basically a string of bytes. So can you imagine trying to read something, even from left to right, that was all just broken, not broken up, just all together, one after another, all the characters? It would be very difficult to read. So basically what file systems have is when you want to make data uh, more readable, you put it in a format, you can read it. For instance, when you write a Microsoft Word document or any kind of Word document, is that you basically are putting it in paragraphs and different formats so you can read it. Same thing is true with data. At basic with data, you're looking to create records or define length of term or something. Inside of there, there'll be fields. So you can have fields, and then you can have records. You can have fields, then you can have records and you can break that physical logical storage down as the computer reads it. So just keep in mind that everything that you do is really being stored out there as a long line of continuous characters. And what you need to do is have some manner of breaking it up to make it readable. A way to think about records and fields is to think about the way that you look at a spreadsheet. You have the, you have the rows and then you have the columns. And the columns can be called fields and the rows are called records. Think of it in that your way. So that whenever you need to have data that's really easy, easily retrievable, you want it in some kind of format that you can actually go and identify it by the record and then the fields within that record. So you can pull different things out. Now one of the things with file systems is that we can have file systems just independent. You can have a lot of separate files. So you can have a, a name, street, first name. You can see the different examples on the screen here. And let's say the record length is 66, 66 bytes. But the thing is, is that you would have to know from the applications coming on that we'll have to declare what that is and find out what kind of... They'll use that in an application, really, to declare what type of file is going to be stored. So I can have one application, and it can create a file that looks like the blue one, I got another application that creates the one that looks like the uh, red one, and I got another one that creates one that looks like the green one. It could mean that we're collecting the same data, but because the applications define it differently, they're dependent upon the application for storage. It means that the red application can't go get the records from the blue application, and the green application can't get one from the either other one. So nobody can talk to each other. That is called data dependency. We are dependent upon the application to find the data and instead of the data being independent. So data independence is when a data stands alone by itself and can be used by different applications and for different purposes. Another issue with file systems is that you can have a lot of data redundancy because you would have different applications that do different things. You may have an application that does things for sales, you may have another one for warehouse, you may have another one for accounting, but they may use all the same types of characteristics as we saw before with the previous example, is that you would have records stored for customers at all three of those different types of operations. Can you imagine the type of problem you would have if you had a file system where the application was storing, deriving and storing all the data by itself? You would have what is called data redundancy. This means you would have customer information over three different places and it could be incorrect at any given time. So as we've seen already with file systems by themselves, there's data redundancy and there's also data dependence issues. So what you want to do is then create a database. 
And what databases do, yes, any file can be called a database, any Excel spreadsheet can be called a database, any flat file can be called a database, but the true sense of a database term, as we've come to know it now, is a database is a collection of related files, basically whose relationships are governed by a set of principles, and they're there to provide for data independence and reduce data redundancy. Again, provide for data independence and redundant redundancy. You've probably all have worked on systems where you've had data uh, problems with data, and you've also had problems with redundancy of data. Largely, that is partly due to the structure and the maintenance of their database and their database systems. So therefore, a database can be that, and that would be a collection of files, meaning that there are different files. You have a customer record. You have these different types of records. And then what you would have is a database management system, or a DBMS, which is basically a collection of programs that are used to, for the creation, maintenance, and use of those databases. Meaning to get to those files and to get to that data, you would have to access through the database management system. So I want to keep it clear that when you are using SQL Server by Microsoft, that is a database management system. When you're using Oracle, you're using Oracle database management system. So basically what you're doing is using database management systems to access the data and manage them. There are three different basic models out there that are still in use, hierarchical, network, and relational. I won't go into a lot of detail. I did write an article on hierarchical. We spend all of our time mostly in classes here on SQL uh, in the relational database uh, model. But the hierarchical model is very popular still. It's being used for transactional-based uh, uh, processing. Banks, uh, big firms still use it. When you have a lot of volume, a lot of transactions going through, it's a lot easier to find records than it is to the relational aspect. So it would be good for you to read the article I have posted about hierarchical models. But what we're going to talk about mostly now is about the relational model. Well, excuse me, I forgot I had a slide in here about the hierarchical model. A hierarchical model is a parent-child relationship. It means one of the reasons why it's uh, so good is it's one to many. That you can go one to many, so you can have a bank, you can have ban branches of a bank, you have an account, and then you can have balance to get to the balance. Well, the only thing with all this is that with a hierarchical method, is if you can see here, is that you go bank, branch, account, balance. To get to it, you need a path. So the thing is, is that to get a path, you need to have a hierarchical, you understand the, all the keys that are necessary to get there. You would need to know all the different things and that be able to get there. You need a set of keys that path your way through there. And so they have to be a segment, you have to be a segment and occurrences. It's a little more difficult to get information or data out for informational purposes, but it's very good for transaction purposes. Meaning that if you're entering school, like at MATC, it's a hierarchical database model that's running behind the systems that's actually being able to allow you to enter uh, classes. It's a lot faster than it is a relational system. So that's what a hierarchical system is. Now, a relational system, on the other hand, is something that is more, I don't want to use the term object-oriented, but then what really it is, is that the data is very independent, and you can develop it so that the data can sit alone by itself. You could have a table, in this case, a relational database could stand all by itself, and then it be its purposes and be used fully by itself. And then you're going to have other, you're going to be able to link it to other tables. Understand a table will be, we'll, we're going to find out later in design, be normalized and taken apart so that you don't have to have all the data in one table. You're trying to make it more data independent and make sure that it's more uh, normalized as you're going to find out, meaning that it, it, the data relates to itself more closely the further you go into normalization. But the thing with relational databases, understand, is you're looking to keep uh, things very data independent and trying to reduce data redundancy. And you do this by linking to each other uh, the tables. So for example, here in a relational database, you're going to have a column in rows. Remember earlier I talked about fields and records? Well, the fields become the column, and the rows become the records. And that overall makes up what a table is. A table is nothing more than a definition of rows and columns. Basically, you take a column de definition, it becomes a table, and the rows make up independent entities or all the different things that are inside the table. So when you create a table, you're going to be creating a, the columns that are going to be in that table with data types, and then you'll be populating it with rows of entities that basically match 
this uh, for these different characteristics. You're also going to have what is called a primary key and a foreign key relationships. Those are there to help reduce redundancy uh, and to in integrity in relationships between different elements. Uh, we'll talk more about that later, but understand primary keys are used what help to link and make sure data is being correct. Uh, again, looking at the relational linking there, uh, and finally wrapping this up, is that with relational linking between this for referential integrity, as you see an example here, is that you can have keys, such as bank number is a primary key here, bank branch number is a primary key here, bank number becomes a foreign key here, but it relates to that, that uh, primary key, account number is a primary key here, but again, you see it has two different foreign keys, so it can relate to this one and relate to that one. And the, with a hierarchical database, you would need to have all three of these in an order to get to it. But basically, we can get to different data, you can see, without having to go straight shot through on a top-down method. Anyways, I wanted to give you a quick overview of database concepts. Please think of things and remember this is just basically files with common data that's being governed by a database management system. Understand that the database management system needs to be in place for the databases to be accessed and to be maintained. And the purpose of all this is to reduce redundancy and, and provide for data independence. Thank you.